Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to do task 3B, which is finishing up our setup with the installation assistant. Now last time we were just about to set up conferencing users, so we'll go ahead and start with that and then we'll do security. Uh, we'll push out our configuration and then finally finish up by logging into the CMS and uh, checking our settings and making sure that everything worked correctly. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Now the conferencing user panel is an optional configuration which enables the importing of users from Active Directory. Again, ordinarily this involves a very complex list of settings that you have to set up in order to, to use this, these features. But again, uh, when you're using the installation assistant, it's actually very easy. Okay, so let's uh, see what that looks like. We're going to check enabling users here, and then we'll choose, uh, well, uh, what, you know, what do you want to use? You want to use secure LDAP or regular LDAP? Uh, in our case, I think we're just going to use regular LDAP. And then we want to put in the FQDN of our domain controller, uh, which in my case is going to be ad1.dcloud.cisco.com. Okay, and we're going to leave the default port at 389. And then the username is going to be cn equals administrator, comma, cn equals users, comma, dc equals dcloud, comma, DC equals Cisco, comma, DC equals com. Okay, it's a really long string. But uh, basically what we're saying here with this is that inside the dcloud.cisco.com domain, there is a container called users. And inside that users container is the administrator. And that's the user we're using for administrative access through CMS, okay? And then uh, we want to come down here and put in our password. And then our search base is going to be uh, just the entire domain. So uh, I'm just going to take this entire dcloud string up here and then uh, just copy that and then paste it down here. And then under user filter and field mapping, uh, we want to select override default user filter and field mapping details. And uh, the reason for this is because it's going to give us more options down here. Okay, so under our LDAP search filter, we just want to change this to telephone number, all pushed together like that. And notice this is camel case. A telephone is lowercase, but number starts with a capital N, then equals asterisk, which is a wildcard. It matches everything, okay? And then down here under display name, we'll leave that as the default. But the username is going to be dollar sign, AM account name, dollar sign at cms.dcloud.cisco.com. Okay, the meeting space is going to be the same as a display name. So this part, uh, this is just a name. So uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm just going to add an apostrophe S here and then meeting space. Okay, so whoever this person is, uh, if their name is John, for example, it's going to be John's meeting space. Okay. And then finally, down here, the space URL. Now, this is going to be the same as the username, uh, at least the first part of it. And actually, that, uh, that's what's already here, so we're, we're good to go. Good. Uh, and then we're going to skip the space secondary URI here and come down to space call ID. And that's going to be a dollar sign IP phone. So basically what this means is that, you know, whatever the IP phone number is listed in AD, you know, that's the value that's going to be added in here. Okay, so the, these are just values within Active Directory, and uh, we're just pulling those values out and using them within Cisco Meeting Server to create, you know, these spaces uh, and users within that environment. So we're going to leave authentication ID mapping blank. Then we'll come over here and click Save and those settings saved successfully. Great. All right, so let's move on to security. Now, the security option allows you to create another user in the Cisco Meeting Server, which is meant for you to use in the event that you were to lose access uh, to your default administrator account. So, you know, it just gives you a, a backup account. Always a good idea to have that. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, you can call it anything you want. Uh, so uh, maybe just for fun, uh, we'll say Luke Skywalker here. And then the password for Luke. 
And then, hmm, what I do here? Oh, I see. Uh, I, I need to change the screen size here. Uh, I made it large. I always make it large so that you guys can see everything more easily. But if it's too large, <laughs> then it's easy uh, for me to look, overlook all of the fields. So I'll just confirm my password here. Click Save. Save successfully. Great. So we're all set. And then now we can go on to the final item on our list, which is to push our configuration. Now, what's really nice about this uh, is that it allows you to validate and double check everything before you push it out. You know, just an opportunity for you to, to scroll down here. You can check your settings, make sure everything looks the way that you want it to look. Now, uh, this one under uh, conferencing user, uh, this is the main one that I care about, uh, the LDAP settings. Always good to double check, uh, make sure that I didn't you know, fat finger something or forget a comma or, or add an extra space or whatever. So it all looks good to me. Uh, looks like we're ready. And when you're ready, uh, you'll just come up here to the top and check validate settings. And then when you do that, it's going to go through its own uh, internal check as well. And uh, if it's okay, you should get a pass on everything here. But one thing that you should kind of keep in mind, it's like under the conference user, for example, if I mistyped something, I might still get a pass here. But when I click push configuration, there's still a possibility that it could fail because Remember, everything here is being configured through the API. So if I misconfigured the LDAP settings, for example, I don't necessarily see those settings in the web interface of the Cisco meeting server. And therefore, I wouldn't be able to make the corrections for anything that was misconfigured. Okay, So although the installation assistant definitely makes certain aspects of configuring your Cisco meeting server infinitely easier, it does also present certain dangers. In any case, setting that aside, uh, we're going to go ahead and push configuration here and we'll get a little progress bar here. And once this is done, I should be able to log into the web interface and confirm all of my settings that I've configured, which I'll go through and show you. OK, so this is going to take just a minute for it to finish. So I'm going to go ahead and speed it up uh, so that you don't have to sit through this. All right, it's finished setting up here. And at the end here, it's going to give you a summary page. Now, this tells us what our web admin link is. Uh, you know, to get to the web administrator page, the interface for Cisco Meeting Server. It tells us our SIP domain, uh, WebBridge URL, and uh, the number of users that are imported, 27. That's actually a good sign. Uh, it means everything imported correctly here uh, because that's how many users I had in LDAP, 27. So that's good. Uh, and then it created this test space for me. And uh, I'm going to jot this down here. Uh, because we're going to use this to play some test calls a little bit later, probably in the next lab, uh, but we will do that a little bit later. And then as far as the installation assistant goes, uh, we're all done with that. So we can go ahead and press exit. That'll take us out of the server, and then, then we'll close out these other windows uh, because I want to take a look at the web interface of the Cisco Meeting Server that we just installed and verify some of our settings. Now, first notice that it gives me that URL with port 445. You got to use port 445. So I'm just going to go ahead and accept this warning. Now, whenever you log into the CMS, uh, you're going to get this screen. And when you click OK, what it does is it starts a clock. So basically, you have 30 seconds to type in your username and password. And if you don't do that within 30 seconds, it'll just send you back to this page to restart the clock, basically. OK, so we'll go ahead and click OK. And that'll take me uh, into the login screen. And I'll log in with admin and then my password. And this is actually a little confirmation here. Uh, once I've logged in, a confirmation uh, that shows the number of failed login attempts. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and click OK, and that will log us in. Now, the first thing that you should look for uh, are error messages. And, and we don't see any here, so that's definitely a good sign. We can pull up PuTTY and uh, go back to it uh, to verify some settings as well. OK, so first notice that uh, at the prompt, it no longer says Akano anymore. Uh, it uses our URL, cms1.dcloud.cisco.com. Uh, also, we configured our DNS settings through the installation assistant, so if I type DNS here, we can see our DNS information. And then if I type uh, user list, 
Remember, we created an extra user and called it Luke Skywalker. Uh, we can see him listed here as well. And then I can type uh, NTP status, and uh, we see I have an active NTP server in here. And I can also type license, and here's all the license I uploaded into the Cisco meeting server. We uploaded certificates, so let's do a PKI list. And there's all the certificates and uh, validity dates for the licenses and uh, my certificates down below. Okay, now if we type WebBridge3, or uh, actually, there shouldn't be a space there. Let me try that again. WebBridge3. Okay, so I can see that it's enabled. It's on port 443. I can see the certificates associated with it. Uh, I've got an HTTP redirect set up. There's the A interface uh, that we set up. Uh, all through, all of this was done through the installation assistant. Okay, so let's go back to the web interface uh, because there are just a few more things that we want to check there. So the first thing we want to do is verify our users, and we can do that by going to, up to status users, and there's all of our users imported from LDAP. Remember, 27, 27 different users. And remember, we were supposed to have created a space for each of these users as well. So to verify that, we'll go up to Configuration, Spaces. And notice the name here of each space. We have Adam McKinsey's meeting space, uh, Anita Perez's meeting space, etc. So remember, we said whoever the user is, dollar sign $CN, apostrophe S, meeting space. Remember, that's how we set it up, so that's how it imported. What's the URI user part? This is the cn.space uh, that we did. And remember the caller ID, this was their IP phone that they had listed in AD. So this is all the pieces of information that we imported from our Active Directory. Okay, and remember, it created a test space for us. So if we go to page two here, Notice that the last space here is our test space. And also, we should have created inbound and outbound calling rules because we have to be able to call in to CMS from the CUCM and call from CMS to the CUCM. So to verify that, uh, we'll check our outbound rules first by going up to Configuration, Outbound Calls. And there's our CUCM rule right there. And we can check our inbound rules by going to Configuration, Incoming Calls. And notice here that it comes in on cms.dcloud.cisco.com and cms1.dcloud.cisco.com. And, of course, the IP address. So I've got three rules created here. Okay, so that should be everything that we need to check. The next step would be to configure some basic call settings on CMS and configure the CCM so that they can communicate with, with each other and then finally do some test calls. Uh, but I think we're going to save that for the next video, Task 4. Uh, so that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.